Well, hi everyone, and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy. You know, today's Friday, and I like to do science on Friday, so we're going to make this an episode of Northwood Scientist. Now, all week I've been visiting smaller YouTube channels that just have really great but underappreciated content, and today is going to be no different. As a matter of fact, I've got two of them for you. The first one is just a shout out to my friend Blue Marble Science down in Tennessee. He and I did the equinox measurement of the circumference of the Earth last March, and we're going to mention that in this video. Our new one is going to be the main surveyor, because today we're going to measure the circumference and the radius of the Earth using the method of this gentleman, Al Biruni. And of course, when we look at horizons, we see a horizon that appears to rise to eye level when we look straight ahead. This is common knowledge, this is a repeatable observation that can be made, but if we wanted to use this uh, understanding of perspective against flat earthers and uh, create a, a scenario that would appear to be impossible on the flat earth, then we're going to avoid really being definitive about what eye level actually means. You know, one of the things that has constantly amazed me about people that claim to be proponents of the flat earth is that they're very long on sayings and very short on data. For example, how many times have you heard the horizon rises to eye level? Okay, how do you tell that it rises to eye level? Your Mark I eyeball? Do we not have instruments that can perhaps find level? Is there such a thing as a water level? So, in this episode, I want to sit down and look at measurements and how they can tell us things about our world. This is critical thing. He went to Phuket, Thailand, to the exact same overlook that Phuket Word just professed that the horizon rises to eye level and actually measured it. He used an electronic level, and he used a water level, because as you know, water always finds its level. And both demonstrate very clearly that the horizon drops from the eye level. In this episode, we're going to talk about something else, the radius of the Earth. How many times has the Flat Earth told us that you can't presuppose the radius of the Earth? To say something is presupposed means that there's no evidence for it. So what I'm going to do today is go over the three main ways that we can determine the radius of the Earth, and then suggest a way that you can find it for yourself. It's not that hard. So let's grab the fountain pen, head back over to the desk, and do a little homework. Okay, so let's look at the method of Eratosthenes. We have a well in Cyrene, which is now modern-day Aswan. On one day a year, June 21st, the sun shone directly down that well, indicating that the sun was directly overhead. By going 500 miles to Alexandria and placing a stick, Eratosthenes was able to cast a shadow that formed an angle. And he reasoned that the angle formed by that shadow could be used to determine the angle of this arc. By determining that there were 500 miles between these two points, and it was approximately 7 degrees, or 1 50th of a circle, he was able to determine that the circumference of the Earth was approximately 25,000 miles. Now, as it turns out, Blue Marble Science and I are almost exactly on a north-south line to the equator. So this worked out very nicely. When the equinox came at solar noon, we simply measured the shadow cast by a stick of known length. From that, we were able to easily calculate our latitude. The distance to the equator was known for both of us. We came up with a number of miles per degree, and by multiplying that out by 360, we found the circumference of the Earth with surprising accuracy. As there were two separate points, plus the equator, 
We not only determined the circumference of the earth, we proved that the surface of the earth was curved. Another way that you can determine the circumference of the earth is to take one point on the earth and a second point a known distance apart that are a certain number of degrees apart at solar noon. This, again, using this method, will give you a circumference of the Earth. The problem with these first two methods is that you have to look up to the sky to determine the size of the Earth. Al Biruni, an Islamic scientist from about 1000 AD, came up with a method of doing it from the ground. And here's how he did it. It was very elegant, and any of us can do this. The first thing you do is you find yourself a mountain that's near a body of water. The reason you want it near a body of water is that it's very important to see where the horizon is. And then what you do is determine the exact height of that mountain. And the way you do that is you draw a line straight out from the mountain and you shoot an angle with an astrolabe to the top of the mountain. Applying a little math to this, you can calculate the exact height of the mountain. But we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to go ahead and start with a known elevation next to the sea. Now the method of Al Biruni is this. He found a mountain of known height of near the seashore. And what he did was he climbed up to the top of that mountain and then he measured an angle to the horizon, like so. Now this angle, we'll call it alpha, is a tangent line to the horizon here. So right here is the horizon. We don't know how far away that is. But we do know that that tangent line forms a right triangle right here. And this side is the radius. This is the radius plus the height of the mountain. Now, this angle alpha equals that angle alpha because they're similar right triangles. You see, here's a right triangle right here as well. Now, if you look at a right triangle with an angle alpha, right here. The opposite side over the hypotenuse equals the sine. But the adjacent side over the hypotenuse equals the cosine. So here we have a right triangle. Here we have an angle. This side is the hypotenuse, and this is the adjacent side. So, the radius over the radius plus h equals cosine alpha. Let's see if we can solve for this radius. So, let's do a little bit of math here. Cosine alpha times the radius plus the height equals the radius. See, all we're doing is we're moving this over to here, but I'm putting it on this side just to make it convenient. Now, we can break this down a little bit to r cosine alpha plus h cosine alpha equals r. And remember these terms here are together. And you multiply r by the cosine just like you multiply h by the cosine of alpha. Now h cosine alpha from here equals r minus r times the cosine of alpha. 
what we're doing is we're putting all the R's on the same side. So, this can be broken down further. H cosine alpha equals R times 1 minus the cosine of alpha. Finally, we end up with the final term. H cosine alpha divided by cosine alpha, or excuse me, 1 minus cosine alpha equals R. We know H and we know alpha and we can calculate the cosine of alpha and we know what one is. We can solve for R. So let's turn this over to the star of the show, the main surveyor. The main surveyor produced this video where he measured the circumference of the Earth using the method of Al Biruni. And I'll let him explain himself. Now there are some technical things in this video and it's a rather long video that he has so it's highly edited right now. But if you want to see just the absolute nuts and bolts of how to do a survey, go have a look at the original video. So what I did is I went out to Portland Headlight in beautiful Cape Elizabeth, Maine. On December 4th of last year, I went up to the National Geodetic Survey disk called Williams Reset at the top of the hill to the northwest of the lighthouse. If you look carefully in this picture, you can see uh, the lighthouse just left of center where the sun is starting to show. So that disc uh, actually looks like uh, this photograph comes from um, the National Geodetic Survey. When you look up their data sheets for these kinds of survey points, you get this in part. And the important information is at the top here. We see uh, in the middle of those two horizontal lines, just below halfway down the sheet, we see that the ortho height in NAVD88, that's the North American Vertical Datum of 1988, we have 72. 13 feet. That is our elevation there. Uh, now that we know what that elevation is, we have our H. We have our H above sea level. Now we can do um, some measurements. So the procedure is going to be, we set up our total station on the NGS disk. So I set up on Williams Reset. I measured my HI. That's the height of my instrument above the ground. And we uh, turn the scope to the horizon and we record the zenith angle. So I want to say at this point that uh, a zenith angle is an angle angular measurement in the vertical axis, where straight up above your head is zero degrees, and absolutely horizontal from where you're standing is 90 degrees. Now that's important to note because later we're going to have to subtract that 90, because we're only interested in measuring from horizontal down to the horizon. And then we measure it in phase one and phase two. So that's two phases. That's important because we got to eliminate error from our measurement. And then we have to complete this step, um, step three, five more times. Now here is my actual sheet where I wrote down the angles. So I have my average. We have the Al Biruni equation, right? I was set up, I was set up at a height of 528. Uh, on the Williams reset, we see at the top there, I have my angle down, my average, which is zero degrees, nine minutes, 35 seconds. And I have the equation, the Al Biruni equation. So we just plug in our values. So radius equals H cosine A divided by 1 minus cosine A. And we have um, 77.4, which is my H, times cosine of our angle. So 0 degrees, 9 minutes, 35 seconds, divided by 1 minus 0 degrees, 9 minutes, 35 seconds. And we find out that the radius is equal to a whole heck of a lot of feet, uh, divided by 5,480 to translate that into miles. I wasn't interested in decimal points. I came up with 3,772 miles. Fantastic. The accepted value is 3,959 miles. I was 95% correct. Okay, I told you guys at the beginning that there's a way that you can do this yourself. What you need to do is you need to find a tall building near a body of water. This is the Willis Tower in Chicago. Now, if anybody is in Chicago and wants to do this, I'd love to see your results. Now, when you bring those two yardsticks up there, put one up by a window and then bring the other one back about 30 feet or so, but make sure you measure it. Then what I want you to do is I want you to sight over that 
yardstick that's the furthest from the window towards the horizon. And I want you to mark where it hits that yardstick that's by the window. There'll be a little drop as we go down the horizon. It should work out to be about two degrees. Using that number and the height of the Willis Tower, for example, compared to the lake level, you can find the circumference of, and the radius of the Earth. I'd like to see your results. So, in the meantime, this is Bob the Science Guy. Thank you very much for stopping by. Make sure you go see the people that we looked at today. We saw Blue Marble Science, we saw the main surveyor, and we saw Critical Think. They'll be linked to all three channels in the description. And while you're at it, give them a little sub and give me one too. So thank you very much for tuning in. This is Bob the Science Guy signing out from Northern Michigan. Y'all have a good day. Music